Hello and welcome to Music Rules. Let's do it! Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of Music Rules with Fen and Jack. I am your host, Jack. And I am your host, Fen. (laughs) Fen Idol. From Australian Idol. That is not a joke. Look it up. It happened. As seen on Australian Idol. (laughs) As seen on TV. Today we are here to talk about a band called Terms and their brand new album, all becomes, all becomes indistinct. indistinct. And then at the end of the episode, we're going to debut a song that I've written in the style of terms that I'm really proud of. So I hope you stay for the whole time and listen to the song because it would mean the world to me. <laughs> 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 all right, on with the show. I think it's the freshest album we've talked about on the podcast yet. Um, because as of as of recording, it came out, I think, nine days ago on the 21st of April, I'm pretty sure. So this, yeah. this, this baby is new. This baby is brand new. It is fresh. This baby is, um, yeah, just straight out the womb. It's got that smell, you know, the new baby smell. Yeah, and the yogurt also, smell. Pr- on the, and it's got a, an unformed skull. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, the skull is a bit soft. Uh, maybe there's a bit of placenta there. I don't know. Do people? <laughs> is it? The, <laughs> it's not the placenta people keep on. It's the um, the thing that's near the belly button, the cord. Yeah. Or, or do they? Are they? Do they cut the cord? I don't know. I've never had a baby before. <laughs> there is no way of knowing what happens until you actually have your own baby. I assume. I haven't bothered looking it up. <laughs> anyway. All right, and we're back. Had a little bit of crappy internet issues mm. once again. You know, I've recorded um, one podcast yesterday. I was on MathCast, um, and then I recorded one this morning with MathCast because the internet cut out yesterday. And now we're here doing it again. And guess what? The internet just sucks. Yeah. In Australia, it's, the internet is very It doesn't bad. get in any easier. <laughs> I feel like we've we've done basically everything we can do to make it better. Mm. Um, maybe we ought to hook up in person and do a few. That could yeah, be fun. yeah, that would be that would be very fun. Yeah, sweet. Um, okay, so back to it. <laughs> All right. We're here to talk about terms um, and their new album. All becomes indistinct. Now, terms is a band signed to the Skingraft Records record label. And they release really cool, really weird music that I adore. And Terms is certainly no exception. Um, so in Terms, we have Danny Pichocki on drums and Christopher Troll on guitar and bass. Um, I hadn't heard Danny before this record, but I know of Chris from his other work in Grand Yulina and Yowie. And... I've got lots to say about him and I think a lot of my kind of discussion and a lot of my points will be pretty focused around guitar because that's kind of my area. Um, So just a bit of warning for that. Um, So let's begin by just playing a freaking song.
was Bluster Guts from Terms. And can I just say, my guts have been totally blustered by that track. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> nice. And it's got nothing to do with the night you had the, uh, the previous night. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. The night you had the previous night. You know what I mean. Yeah. That um, night last week or whatever. Yes. Yeah, that's or right. Or one week in the future, up. depending on how we release these. That's true. <laughs> the night that happened one week and a half ago. Um, so, uh, here we are. I mean, look, th- like, I have a bit of a context for this style of music that maybe you don't as much because I, like, I very much kind of live and breathe um, atonal guitar, like, kind of, you know, off-kilter rhythms, that sort of thing. Um, what, what What are your sort of thoughts on this song? Like, what, what did it... What did it bring for you? Yeah, that's interesting because you're right. I don't, I generally don't listen to this style of music. Um, but I've listened to stuff like battles a lot in the past. So I guess that's kind of my point of reference um, mm. for this kind of instrumental proggy stuff. Uh, but I really, I really enjoy it. Um, it's really mm. fun to listen to. And it's nice to listen to something different than my normal taste that's been one of the fun things about the podcast in general is like yeah you can show me a cool album and then i get to dig into it yeah yeah super fun i feel i feel the same way regarding what you've been showing me it's really really cool um nice uh, i think we have quite similar tastes but just kind of different different styles in a way yeah but um yeah this i'm very familiar with chris's playing from yaoi um I figured out how to play a Yowie song once by watching um, a video of Chris performing it. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was on an old iPad like six years ago. And I remember just sitting there and just skipping back and focusing in and trying to figure out what the hell he was playing. And I remember it being quite difficult and I found him on the internet on Facebook, good old like um, stalker behavior (laughs) And I sent him a message and I said, Hey, Chris, I love the new Yaoi video. I think your playing's great. I think it's amazing. Um, any chance you could tell me what tuning you use? Mm. And he got back to me and he not only told me the tuning, but he sent me something like, you know, maybe like a one and a half page to two page list of every single time signature in that song that I was trying to transcribe. Trying oh, my to God. Wow. Um, And it was, I mean, it was such a fantastic and kind thing to do yeah. because it really sort of did help out. But I think also it kind of speaks to the willingness of people within this community to kind of just share. And um, there's really, there's not much secrecy in terms of ideas or anything like that. The other interesting thing is, um, is the fact that the way he sent it to me was just numbers. So it wasn't yeah. like any sort of notation. It was just like, oh, this is a quick three three two 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 three three two two section. Yeah. And then this is the same three three two two section but flipped backwards and it was um yeah. I really like how these sorts of bands kind of they create their own languages for how they talk about music. Yeah, I mean um, that's an economical way to do it, like just doing the mm. numbers. Yeah, um, of course. Of the groups and not worrying too much about time signatures and things like that. Yeah, because I I guess it would get to a certain point when you're composing music like this. It kind of feels like maybe if you're putting everything into a specific, like like notating it in a specific way, um, it can kind of, it it passes its usefulness after a while. And and in the end, it's probably easier just to talk numbers. Um, But yeah, there's some really interesting things happening in this song. Um, At 110 there's this section that begins where it's just guitar and drums and it sounds like the guitar is improvising and the drums were added later. Mm. Um, I sent Chris, uh, sent Christopher a message about this and he confirmed that fact that yes, the guitar was improvised in that section Yeah, and Danny just kind of empowered it and gave it context and made wow. it sound really cool. That's awesome. Um, Reminds me of like, um, sometimes you'll see videos of like a peep show, a monologue from the TV show Peep Show and like somebody's mm. playing drums to the monologue uh, oh, in, yeah. in time with like this spoken word thing. Um, 
it's almost a bit like that yeah yeah no i i i, I think it's very similar i think um uh, what's the other one that was really good there's a new york drummer um dan, dan vice dan dan weiss um another guy who's dan and he did one for the fedex commercial okay you just got the fedex on monday only on tuesday new york on wednesday only on thursday you know on friday got it got it um it's really good I'll, I'll leave a link in the show notes to nice. that but uh yeah so and then it kind of continues on another thing that happens in this song and kind of just throughout the whole album and probably look probably throughout a lot of chris's um kind of just voice as a musician is extremely low tuning and um very very big prominent bends so there's that yeah. theme that's about like 347 it goes boom boom wail 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 i love that part yeah me too it's it's got these lovely like and i think it sounds like there's tracked guitar in your left and right ears like it's very stereo very like very in your face um and it kind of reminds me have you heard of the vietnamese scalloped fret guitars by any chance no so they're just like they're these guitars that are made in vietnam and what it is is it's just like a normal fender copy like it just looks like electric fender guitar but they scallop out the frets underneath so there's like a space kind of like it almost becomes like a like a peeper if you know that chinese instrument where, where you sort of you, you put your finger on the fret and it plays a note but you push down with your finger and it goes bowing. and it can do sort of like bends of like up to like a a fourth or even higher maybe right um, so the low tuning of the guitar makes it easier to do the bends, right? Because there's less tension in the string? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen Chris's guitars, Christopher's guitars. I, I don't think he's playing scalloped, scalloped, however you say it, scalloped fretboards. But I do know that he's playing in um, low tunings. I think I think he, from memory, it's he plays from low to high. C, G, D, G, B, D, I think. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting <laughs> tuning. Um, but yeah, you get that really floppy low um, bottom string that yeah. means you can be really expressive. Yeah. Hmm. One thing that it reminded me of is the playing of Ornette Coleman. I don't know if you've listened to much uh, Ornette Coleman, but he's one of the, heaps. He's like the innovator of what we call free jazz. But when you listen to his playing, it's like, Essentially, it's like he's trying to break the instrument somehow or mm. just find new ways to express himself within the confines yeah. of the instrument. It's like yeah. he's just doing everything possible, like bending the sound, um, mm. you know, making sounds that you didn't think were possible on the saxophone. Um, and that's what I feel like Chris is doing with his guitar playing as well. It's like he's just trying to make sounds that you've never heard a guitar make before or, you know, He's just really pushing the limits of what is possible on the instrument, which is what I find super cool. Absolutely. Um, and it's super expressive and, yeah, like, cool to listen to, especially mm. for instrumental music. Like, I feel like it needs that expressive it does. quality. It um, does. In order to be interesting. I, I also had written in my notes that and the fact that I think the tones on this album are all very varied, which I think helps to tell the story. Um, to yeah. kind of carry a narrative through these songs. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also had here, Danny's playing is like a guitarist's dream. It is so groovy and supportive, although at times it is hard to tell who is supporting who. Or if yeah. they're both just on a freaky journey together. Yeah. He is an incredible drummer. Holy mm. moly. Just yeah. seems like the kind of person who has played so much drums studied so much drums and has so many weapons in his arsenal if you know what i mean yeah. like i bet he can play like whatever polyrhythm like you gave to him or whatever and then but then in this band it's probably more a lot looser and like more improvised um but he's just able to do all these like really complex stuff because he's just a brilliant drummer mm. yeah I, I think maybe the best kind of evidence of that or the best kind of um what's the word like yeah the best evidence in support of that fact is probably the improvised section where yep. 
Chris is just playing improvised guitar and then yeah Danny's given it all this powerful support and context to really make it explode yeah um, I've done the opposite once I had a project called Changers um, with a Sydney drummer called Miles Thomas we only released one song but he sent me he sent me like an him improvising for like 10 minutes and I just grabbed a bit and then wrote guitar to it yeah and that's cool yeah it's, that's it's a cool fun. way to it's, do things yeah it feels like it feels very intimate in a way because <laughs> mm. yeah, it's totally. like you're like engaging um you're engaging in the minutia of someone's improvisation like it's a yeah i don't know it's interesting let's yeah, move on I, yeah oh sorry <laughs> oh i was just gonna say when i was listening to this i had no idea it was two people like i thought it yeah. was a, like a full like big band and everything but um yeah yeah I, I, it's awesome that it's two people yeah it is it's nice it's like I th- and i think some of it and this trans tran- this transitions really well into what we're about to talk about because we're gonna now listen to the song points for composure There it is. Points for composure. Um, we were talking a little bit about Ornette Coleman before, so yeah, it's kind of fun to have a track that could almost be um, put into like a kind of jazz context. Yeah, definitely. It's funny that like I was so shocked when I was listening to this album, and then all of a sudden there was like a soprano saxophone. <laughs> it was like a soprano saxophone drop in what is this like the <laughs> the tenth track? Crazy. Yeah. Um <laughs> and it starts so suddenly. It's so it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, this yeah. song it uh it reminds me of another jazz of a jazz standard uh called Evidence by Thelonious Monk. Uh-huh. Um I'll, I'll sing some of it for you right now. It goes a bit a, a little a little, little a little something like this. Take it away. Bum 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 ba da bum <laughs> my friend that is swinging yeah i feel yeah. like in in, in that in that like last five seconds i was just transported to like a jazz club yeah by... <laughs> but it's like a I really was just there in new orleans <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hard song to play because it's like all of these hits that are really specific but interspersed 
at right. in these strange places within the time signature. Um, can I maybe can I look up the sheet music while you talk about it? Yeah, yeah, it? sure. Evidence, Thelonious Monk. Evidence by Thelonious Monk. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, and I feel like they're doing a similar thing where at first, like you hear, like, oh, it feels like there are just random spurts of sound, but then mm. you have to kind of logically think, but how are they playing it all together at the same time? How are the drums setting up each hit? That is yep. extremely hard to do. Yep. Um, Look, I'm, I'm looking at the music. Impressive. You're not wrong. It is there. They're very much like offset by like a quarter note and then like a um, 16th. And it's kind of, yeah, it does yeah. look really tricky. Yeah. Yeah. So it reminded me of that song because they're both doing that thing with the hits where they're kind of, I think evidence mm. is probably more, a lot simpler than um, points for composure, but similar Sim- music. Similar idea. concept. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I I um I heard this and it immediately made me think of a Brisbane slash Melbourne band called Milton Mango. Do you know of these guys? I know of them through your Instagram stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and I know you're talking about how like a- Andy Schoff is like um like a like a guy you evangelize, like music that you like to evangelize to people. Milton Mango is definitely my band I like to evangelize. Um, nice. they're great. I mean, they're like a similar sort of setup. It's like bass, drums, and then sax. Um, I think the sax player plays tenor, Andrew. Hmm. I'm not really sure though. I don't really, I don't really know much about saxophones. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the lower and bigger one that isn't a baritone. So I'm assuming mm. that's tenor. That's the tenor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, this, this track immediately jumped out at me because, um, I wrote like, while I, I'm really glad that this album, like Chris and Danny weren't worried to like add, add, add more, add in more layers than there are people. Like, I think that's really cool. And it's kind of like, um, probably one of the plus, one of the upsides of doing a project via correspondence like this, um, but I also really love that there's tracks every now and then that are just um, like they, you, you could be standing in a room and hearing this being played live. Like it's just guitar, drums and sax. Yeah. And it's kind of refreshing in a way. Um, yeah. Uh, I, and I think on that, I'd love to see it live. So you guys should learn how to play it live and do, post a video of it. Because <laughs> I, I want to I hear it. Um, yeah. So that is also, I think half of it was improvised um, because Chris told me that half of it was improvised. And I think from the middle section onwards, it sounds to me like it was um, pre-written unless Chris just can randomly pull out like a riff in like 31, 8, 16 or whatever it is yeah, um, and just kill it. But yeah. It was insane to me how the drummer was like setting up the hits in that second section and maintaining this consistent pulse, um, even while the hits were so syncopated. Yeah, that is super hard to do. It is super hard. Yeah, it's and it's but it's it's a nice kind of I don't know. It's nice as an audience member or as like a listener. Yeah, as a listener to be able to kind of have something to propel you through these rhythms, like a consistent. Hat yeah, or definitely. crash or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that was points for composure. And the sax player, our soprano sax player, was a person by the name of David Pate. Mm. Thanks, David. Mm. You did really good. I look forward to hearing you more. Okay. So the last track we're going to talk about today is the song Sleep Until It's Colder. And I believe this is actually the last track off of the album. Um that's right yes so let's listen to it three two one music
Wow. Um, what a yeah. song. What a tune. Yeah, I think that's a quite uh, quite nice climax to kind of deliver at the end of the album. Yeah. That last section is so lit. There's no other word for it. It's so it extremely a, lit. It is 100% lit. Boom. <laughs> And the rhythm of it is so cool because, yeah. like, they introduce that guitar riff, boom, and then the bass goes, and so, like, you're feeling it in four or whatever, like, a uh, simple time, and then all of a sudden, like, the there's like this seismic shift to this kind of more triplet feel, compound time feel. Mm. And then there's that bar of one at the end of that pattern as well, which is so, so sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had that written as six, 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 seven. Whoa. Um, so bar of 31. Very, uh, I think. Devilish. Ooh. If there's six, four six. sixes, maybe it's, maybe it negates it. Yeah. I don't know. Seven is lucky, so. Hmm? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I need to brush up on my numerology. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we talk about a lot of numbers on these uh on these we do. episodes. <laughs> we do. We should find out what they mean. Um Yeah. Hey, when you heard the very beginning of this song, did it remind you of anything specifically? I don't think so. The um It um uh is it microtonal? I feel like I feel like it's very like, um, it's very like detuned kind of guitar, like yeah. very like, yeah. W- once again, lots of those bends. But um, to me, it just reminded me of working at a music school, <laughs> which is why I asked you that, because <laughs> it sounds like a it sounds like someone running a scale up and down. Yeah. Um, I wrote in my notes here. The opening riff sounds like something I used to sarcastically do at an old music school I taught at. Um, not the one that we taught at together. This is a different <laughs> one where they treated me very poorly and paid me badly. So The one that I still work at, you mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not that one. Um, <laughs> the, 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 this was one oh, far out. Like, how long? How old am I now? Tw- yeah, literally, literally 13 years ago or longer. Um, the walls in between all the rooms were like paper thin. It was one of those ones where you get given a room that's like, it, you're basically like um, you're basically stuck in this very loud space where there's all of this bleed from the other rooms, so you can hear everyone playing drums, singing, doing whatever songs they were doing back in 2010. Um, and I used to hear like singing teachers next door to me running like the scales, like ma ma mi ma mi ma ma mi mo be mo ma na 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 na. Um, and they just sort of kept going. And I remember I hated this school so much. I just used to play the, <laughs> I just used to play the scale, um, on the piano, a semitone flat from them mm. every time they were singing, <laughs> just because it's out of sheer spite for my situation and everything. Yeah. Um, it sounded disgusting and I'm sure it was very upsetting for everyone involved because <laughs> they could undoubtedly hear me oh, as yeah. much as I could hear them. Well, it's good practice for them. Yeah, you know, you gotta maybe they'll be getting some gigs for like um what's it called? Weyburn Operas or whoever. Yeah. Schoenberg. Um, yeah, Schoenberg. Yeah, they, they need to know their atonal um yep. they need to anyway. develop their inner ear. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, they need to push on. Um but yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. I think the the tone as well is very funny. Like it almost sounds like it could be like a, just a completely DI guitar. Like it's a really naked tone. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's, and then it, of course, starts to blast um, a little way in. Everything comes in together. Um, and before it cuts out to that, uh, you know that section at 202? I, I realize there's a lot of ideas in this song, but it's the bit where it all cuts out and there's just bass and drums and it goes... Oh, yeah. I really yeah. love that. It's a... Um, yeah. It's something... You know they do? They do a, a perfect um, four against three polyrhythm. There. Yeah. And, and, uh, and look, I mean, a lot of people can play a four against three polyrhythm, but mm. it's very easy to play it and not have the right feel. 
it, mm. it's almost like hard to describe how like have the right almost tension and release in the way that you play it and make it even and like properly bouncing off the pulse in a really yeah. specific way. They yeah. f- er, freaking nail it. They freaking nail it. They do. I almost and, swore. And, and, oh, we don't, we don't swear. That's here. how passionate I was about that. Uh, <laughs> them nailing a four against three poly rhythm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really like it because it's a thing that I think I've heard Chris do before. Actually, I know I've heard him do it before. I just don't know if he wrote it. There's um there's a song called Mysterium Tremendum um, off of the Yowie record Synchro Mysticism. And at about 2.20, it's kind of the only instance of Yowie ever playing in 4-4 for more than like five seconds. But they have this riff. So they go into that triplet thing and then it goes back to the four. But they do the same thing where they just keep on doing triplets in a way that doesn't really resolve evenly. Yeah. Very cool. And I don't know. It's just kind of fun, like sort of listening to this and knowing he's playing. You sort of, like we're talking about with Andy, you sort of get an ear for little ideas and little things that they use musically that kind of makes up their, um, makes up their, what's the word? Artistic. Their sound and yeah. Their sound, their, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, their, their style as an artist. Yeah, their aesthetic. Um, I also wrote, there's a very specific one that I'm going to put in in post, which is really funny, but he does this bend in um, 103 at the plummet section. <laughs> which is the exact same bend that he does at 537 in Ineffable Dolphin Communion by Yowie. <laughs> it's this exact same note and it's so distinctive. That's so funny. Um, it's funny how like the actual key, the actual pitch of something uh, can really trigger like a, a memory of a song. <laughs> yeah. So like I just played a chord the other day in one of my theory lessons and two of my students started singing this one specific song. That they wow. both that started with that chord. Um, what was the song, if you don't mind me asking? I have no idea. It was like a K-pop song. Um, oh right. But I don't remember the yeah. name or the band. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's like sometimes you'll hear like a traffic light or whatever, like some weird beep, mm. and you'll be like, all of a sudden you're thinking of a song, and it's because mm. it's the same pitch or it's in the same key. I love that. Generally, I love that. And yeah, and, it's insane. And and I find it really cool as well that um completely atonal music and yet it's still that pitch was meaningful so maybe schoenberg was right what was what was he saying yeah. about how people would be whistling atonal tunes in the 21st century you can, yeah you can definitely have catchy um atonal music like mm. i mean i was singing the riff from this song just before i don't know i don't know if you'd call this completely atonal but um no it's definitely like a there's a key center, right? Yeah, that's that's actually so maybe it's like chromatic or yeah, whatever. So, you something would I noticed with that. this album is like I think if you were to meticulously listen to it and go through every single track and try and keep track of when it's tonal, when it's atonal, I think it, you'd have a a pie chart with just a slice in the middle because I think mm. it is so evenly distributed between um, atonality and tonality. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd be curious if he like uses particular scales or anything. I I assume he probably doesn't like mm. think too hard about that. Or mm. I assume it's probably not like, oh, I'm gonna use an octatonic scale. But um, <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, this. I wonder if he's got some like some patterns that he maybe likes to play. Um, for sure. Yeah. Overall, I, there's a sound to the tonality that's consistent in the album. Yeah. I I think patterns is definitely the right word because I think on account of the unique tuning system that he's using, I'd say it's probably likely that um, he has the shapes that he plays on the guitar that sort of give a specific tone color or specific kind of way to play chords. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I paint you a mental image of me listening to this album? Paint it away. So I'm on my way home from work. Um, at the previously mentioned music school, um, <laughs> who does actually treat me very well. Yes. Um, yeah. My boss treats me like her second son or whatever. 
Uh, one time, one time I showed up with wet clothes, and she gave me all these clothes to wear, Aww. and put my clothes in the dryer and stuff. That's so nice. I just want to provide the counterpoint to Jack's experience, which was a bad one by all accounts, not the best. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm on my way home from work. It's like pitch black. I'm riding a bike along a path by a river, and I have a head torch on, and I am listening to this album extremely loudly. Um. <laughs> And, like, there are all these, like, trees, like, just, like, rushing past me because I'm riding quite fast. And it's just, like, it was such a <laughs> thrilling uh, experience, like, listening uh, to it like that. Awesome. And just hearing the build in this song, like, mm. as I was, like, riding, uh, like, along a river in Campsie or whatever, like, mm. it was the, so the, the most polluted cool. river in Australia, did you know? Really? The Cook's, the Cook's river? river? Yeah. Wow. There was a Vice That's documentary sad. about it. Oh. It's, it's bad to look at. I it's mean, really yeah, I I like it. I live right on the river, but um, I mean, Fair I just enough. like that it's a body of water, yeah. and there are like pelicans and stuff there every now and then. When, when They're I was cleaning there, it up, it's it's getting slightly better, I think. That's good. When I was there yeah. during um, the lockdowns, that river was a saving grace, despite all yeah. the grossness of it. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and there are definitely times when it smells, and um, yeah. I'll be uh, sitting in my house and thinking, what is that smell? And then I realize that it's the river. <laughs> but um, but it's also because it's on a mangrove and like mangroves mm. just smell anyway. They so do, yeah. I don't think yeah. it's because of the pollution. I think it's just, well, maybe it's part, you know, yeah. column A, column B. Maybe a bit anyway, of both. we're not that- here to talk about the pollution levels of the cooks river no not that, that's our that's our um that's our sister podcast um, yeah that we also run called um e- ecoactivism rules but <laughs> you, you 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 can find that um you can find that yourself so uh we're talking about um where was it oh yeah so yeah you were driving through you were riding through rushing through the trees they're all sweeping past yeah, I and think it's pitch black, and my only light is like this head torch, so I can only see like four meters in front of me, and think, like a bit on either side. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> I want to ask, what was your reaction to the solo at the very end at about four twenty-two? I, I I call it a solo, but maybe it's not technically a solo. It's yeah. the bit that um, if you want to listen to it, you can. But it's it's the no, bit no, I that, I remember uh, yeah? from the from the song. Yeah, yeah, I. I honestly, I only just noticed the solo now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like I've listened to the album a couple of times, but um, yeah, um, yeah, that specific solo, I was like, oh yeah, he's like really, it's like really fun. It's like a yeah. really fun solo. Yeah, I so I so agree. Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I was like, this is like the wildest creative choice to make. Like it is so yeah. so funny. Um, yeah, it's kind of like I think everything like in like what he's playing plus like what the tone is um and it's all like the fact it's very pentatonic like it's almost like kind of like a a, like a classic rock guitar solo like Mm. just this like you know just really so pentatonic and just to have it at the end of this crazy odyssey of an album and you know crazy odyssey of a song with all these different moving parts and tempo and time signature changes it's, i loved it yeah. yeah great choice yes um yeah I, I appreciate the humor and if it wasn't meant to be humorous i'm sorry <laughs> 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 but I, I i feel like it was definitely intended to um kind of add something to the song that wasn't already there and it did very good yeah it's funny like that you can express all these emotions with um, purely instrumental music. Like, yeah. you can do something that is, like, ironic or mm. whatever. Like, you yeah, can have tongue in these cheek. emotions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember there's this whole debate about the end of Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony about how um, it's very, very insistently major key. Right. Um, But it was written under Stalin and, like, it had to be... It had to way. have this like triumphant ending or whatever, yeah. um, and he wrote that it like he what he had in mind when he was writing it is it's like people being forced to celebrate, uh. um, because it's so insistently major key and there's a pedal point <laughs> throughout like the the last three minutes of it like this dominant pedal point there's like 
300 like quaver A's played in the violin one part or something. It's just like, John, 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 John. <laughs> and just this huge brass and like everything is so over the top. Um, uh, I'll have to put yeah, that in. Just, just as an example of like something yeah. where the emotion is not like, it's not happy. It's not sad. Mm. It's like really specific, but only um, shown in musical means you know what i mean yeah there's, there's like, like you there's don't no, need lyrics to yeah and yeah. not even like the title of of like the song or anything it's just it exists purely purely as an interpretation of what's going on musically yeah yeah yeah, yeah you can do yeah so before we ironic ra- or weird yeah before we do it and wrap or before we wrap the album and go into my song i just want to bring up some little f- facts actually no i don't no i don't really need to um that'll do us for the album let's listen to my song are you excited do you want to listen to my song i am excited okay that's good i'm super excited give me a second i don't i don't want to i don't want to force it you know (laughs) i don't want to (laughs) force the mood if we just want to finish without it like i'm chill with that um (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually scared. I'm scared to listen to the song. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> I think it's maybe scary. I don't know. Okay, okay, you ready? Yeah, give give me a countdown. One, two, three. Music. <laughs>
yeah. That's a good song. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. That was awesome. Thanks so I much. I love the section from about 2.45. And I love the piano drop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so cool how, like, hearing the same thing but played on a different instrument gives you a totally different kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. When I was writing this, I thought for some reason there was piano on this album. I don't know why I thought that. Because I'd already listened to it. But, yeah, there's not piano. But there is usage of, like, violin and sax so yeah. yeah and you know why not why not have piano why not yes <laughs> yeah um i felt like that 247 section kind of came through as a chorus a bit like i get i i think i unconsciously kind of recreated this section in um sleep until it's colder um yeah the one that's like two uh, it's one that's at 220 mm-hmm. it's kind of like these melodic sections followed by like some really loosey goosey guitar chromatic stuff like big bends yeah. and things so um i also put in a section where i improvise guitar and then wrote drums to it um, yeah i was wondering whether you use that as a songwriting method yeah um yeah that makes sense because i yeah i was wondering while i was listening like how do you go about writing something like this because this to me is like something i could I, I can't even begin to wrap my head around kind of writing it. Do you notate majority of it, um, or um, is it, it more just playing in the, the in the um, in Garage Band or whatever? Yeah, I just played in Ableton. Yeah, um, and and the I like the riff ideas would come in, and I'll just do them. It's kind of yeah. like um, yeah, just I tried to just write really unself consciously and just mm-hmm. like. I think I think one of the biggest difficulties with this style of music isn't so much playing in difficult time signatures as it is playing like finding a way to string sections together that makes sense and is coherent. Um, yeah, I think if, if I could be a little bit critical of my composition, um, I think this is something that Terms did really well. Um, mm. Whereas I, I sort of made my song. I think I think I spent like six hours on it or something. Um, and I sort of just strung it together in a way that was like, oh, well, I introduced this theme here and now I'm going to put it here as like a transition. And, um, yeah, yeah. When when I do tempo transitions, I try to make them, um, somewhat close to the original tempo, um, as a way to put it in, but yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Trying to think of anything else. Yeah. It's it's complicated. Like, um. Yeah, you definitely had, like, it was cool to hear, like, so many, there were so many different ideas uh, within the one song mm. and, like, so many different kind of sound worlds. Like, it was a really fun journey through all these different pieces. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Cool, I, I, cool I sort of just it. tried to, yeah, kind of just tried to copy their their way of doing things. I, I will say something funny that happened was, I I went on this bit of an obsession trying to get my drums to sound as real as possible. <laughs> um, my MIDI drums. Drums sounded good. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I got yeah. the Get Good Drum VST. Um, nice. But the the thing that the thing that I found really difficult was velocities. So, like mm. for people who don't use MIDI or haven't used it before, you you can basically adjust how hard like a snare drum is hit or any yeah. drum for that matter, um, by using velocities. And I know for this one, I, um, yeah, I had to really mess around and get in and tinker with velocities to try and make it sound at all natural human. and human. Yeah. And, um, I've got to automate the velocities. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You do. You got to make it sound real. And the other thing I did was I tried to take the drums off the grid as much as possible. Oh, okay, yeah. But I will say, I think I took it too far because I listened to Danny's playing and Danny's really tight. <laughs> and my yeah. drums, by comparison, are kind of sloppy. So maybe they're a bit too human. I was like, while I was listening, I was kind of imagining how this could sound as like a Basil's Kite song, you know, with mm. Isaac um, yeah. playing drums. And I think that would be like really sick. Yeah. Um, so I did kind of have that in my head, but um, yeah. Yeah. 
I think <laughs> every, every time I've shown Isaac the drums I've written, he's like, he's not too mean about it, but he is a bit like, oh man, like this is like classic guitarist writes drums. Like I'm sure it would be very different if it, if it were you writing drums, for instance, like someone who actually plays the instrument. Um, yeah, but maybe um, as a drummer, you, you'd be very wedded to particular drum conventions or whatever. So maybe it's true. cool that you're writing it in a different way and then he can just adapt it and make it playable mm. yeah that's true so yeah yeah I, the one thing i did try and do is i tried to make sure that i didn't have any parts where they were playing like a snare drum and three toms at the same time <laughs> like i tried oh, yeah, to plus. straight stay mindful of the fact that drummers have two arms yes um, only two yeah unfortunately yeah <laughs> sadly at, at least at this point in time um but yeah that was our episode on terms um yeah don't forget if you enjoy this episode and even if you didn't give us five stars on spotify apple music whatever rate us up high yep. so more people can listen tell your friends so more, more people can listen and um yeah i don't know is there anything else people can do to support us uh they can follow us on instagram at music rules cast um, you can follow us on Twitter as well, even though uh, we don't really use the Twitter. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Um, what else can you do to support us? Just keep being yourselves. Yeah, but Just keep, keep being yourselves. Your lovely selves. That's right. Hold, hold us in your heart. Um, like maybe. And if you have listened this far to the end of the episode, you, um, you might be in the band like terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should give a gift to everybody who finishes an episode. Yeah, um, like so, just you know, give me your address, uh, phone number, um, passport number. Yeah, ID, credit card details. Yeah, just scan your scan Front your credit back. card. Send that to me. I, I, um, I saw a great meme. It was like um, it was like it was like what's your math core numbers? And then it was just like your math core numbers are. The numbers on the front and the back of your credit card. Post them below. <laughs> that could be fun, actually, to like <laughs> to make a song that's just like your credit card numbers. <laughs> yeah. You could release an album just doxing yourself. You could like yeah, yeah, like put- and like people that have really um, people who are good at music theory, mm. they can uh, they can use your credit card yeah to make purchases if they can figure it out. That's right, and 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 if they've gone to that. You know, if they've gone to that extent to figure out those like twenty digits or whatever it is, like they deserve yeah. it. They deserve they do the money. Deserve it. Come on, just let them have it. Let them have it. Yeah, but yeah, we got to figure out a way to get people to stick around to listen to our songs because they're, yeah. they're good songs that we're making. Yeah, we'll, we'll be watching all it's y'all fine. in the analytics. If you if you aren't yeah. listening, we'll find out who you are. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ninety eight percent chance you're a man. <laughs> We've seen the gender breakdown for our podcast. It's not good. Yeah. It's not it's not <laughs> that good. Yeah. Um Yeah. Where um it was not intentional. We didn't intentionally no. curate an audience of only men. No, I thought I thought the Basil's <laughs> Kite Spotify stats were bad, but this is way worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's all right. We should do a music rules live show and see how those demographics play out in real life. Oh uh, yeah, just yeah, that would be interesting. It has to be in a hundred capacity theater so that we can do a um yeah, a good uh an easy percentage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Get, we can get everyone to stand in different women. corners of the room. <laughs> um Yeah, sweet. Well, thanks so much for listening. And don't forget yep. Music freaking rules. Spend every it day does. celebrating the goodness of music. I've been, honestly, I've been celebrating music much more often recently. Me I too. I don't know if it's because of this podcast, but I've just been listening to music and uh, really enjoying it. I attribute it to the podcast. Yes. Yeah, 100%. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye. Bye.